whenever you're ready. Can you tell me about this thing? So for this project, we kind of, the aim of this project is to build a power estimator for FPGA. So uh, there will be two demos in this lab. The first one we will, uh, so so for this lab, we uh, put, uh, purchase this board to, to measure the current and then we kind of use, uh, and this board uses I2C interface to uh, to communicate with, uh, with the board and also the FPGA. So we, uh, with uh, HPS, so we, build this circuit and for this first demo we use a current source to directly feed the current into that board and uh, okay. uh, we use uh, the VGA interface to 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 give user the data of of, of the measurement of these parameters <coughs> and uh, to see if we can measure the correct current uh, voltage and also the power so uh, what we do uh, the first demo is like uh, firstly we put the uh, put the current uh, at zero, so the the whole int uh, the data is like that. Although sometimes it's a little bit uh, accurate, but so uh, the just to be clear, the data that we're looking at, the top trace is current. Yeah. Middle trace is uh, power. Dynam dynamic power. It's just as a current uh, times twelve volt because we assume the uh, a voltage is always at twelve. Volts. Okay. Okay. And after that, the the average power indicates the uh, overall uh, power, like uh, from the start to to where we end. Okay. So, uh, so we can show you. So first, uh, if we want to stop the uh, stop the uh, the VGA screen to see the data, so we just uh, press two, then it stopped. Okay. And then if we want to continue, then we press uh, press uh, press one, and it continues. And then if we want to start from the beginning, we just uh, uh, enter three to calibrate the, so it will be back to zero. Okay. And, and measure again. So uh, to verify the correctness of this design, we kind of like, we in increase the data, uh, increase the current. Then Very cool. So we, uh, we can see that Let's calibrate first. Uh, if we start from zero and we increase uh, current, and then we can see that the average power is increasing and uh, yes. the current is increased from the zero. And then if we uh, decrease, it will. you can see that the average power is decreasing and the dynamic power is back to zero. And uh, we are able to uh, read the overall energy that uh, power source, uh, current source consumes and also the uh, the time we measured and also the average power the dynamic power which is there so is is average power measured over a particular window of time or is that sort of since oh it's from us uh, it's from the st uh, the point we press one and uh, to the point we uh, press stop okay 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 uh, so this is for the first demo and the next demo will be like we directly uh, uh, insert this board between the power adapter of the FPGA. Okay. And, uh, uh, we're able to verify that uh, to use serial to to program the FPGA and uh, to use uh, with or without Ethernet, we can we can see a very large power difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. So, so this this demo that you're doing now, you're measuring the current and energy coming from the power supply and yeah. it, you can sort of see that the two match so it can convince yeah, yeah, you that yeah. it's working correctly yeah okay because there's uh, if we directly use the uh, power of uh, pg maybe it's uh, a little bit hard to 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 measure the difference because uh, like the power and the difference of the power consumed by FPGA will, will not be that sure. significant. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we'll Very cool. the next uh, next demo is to How long is directly the insert this board to to the between the Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'll pause this and let you guys get set up. What we have from the uh, uh, from the FPG using serial to control, we can see that the uh, the now power average power is like uh, the Ethernet cable is connected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with Ethernet connected, the power will be like eight point two watts. So, so you're now you're now measuring the power consumption not from this, yeah. but instead the power Directly being consumed by FPGA. the device. If we disconnect this Ethernet cable, let me calibrate can see that the average power directly go to 6.6. Wow. wow, interesting. That's uh, the that's, uh, first uh, difference. And then uh, we...
insert it back. And then where did I get? You can see that the average power back to 8.2. So uh, we did some research from the website. They said mm -hmm. that the, uh, the Ethernet is quite power consumption like in the uh, FPGA. So this demo kind of verifies this, this Very result. Interesting. And also uh, in, in this design, we kind of, we put 2000 uh, 32 bit counter into the FPGA to, to verify that maybe our design, uh, how our design would in the FPGA will affect the power consumption. But the result shows there's not much difference. Sure, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so the, so the counter here is once we press start uh, uh, reset zero, it, it will it will like start the counters, and then there's <laughs> not much difference. Sure. Okay. So um, maybe uh, we uh, we deduce that maybe network counter is not enough to make a big difference. <laughs> so this is mm, basically what we have what we have for 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 this demo. And then I think because the time is limited, maybe in the future we can uh, verify in our lab one and lab two to see how the that, that'd be really interesting. Power yeah. Consumption change. So. Yeah. Where something is compute intensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now there's a there's an option in in Quartus mm -hmm. to to there's a power estimator in Quartus that you might want to compare to this mm -hmm. if you you can. There's a pull-down menu item that says, give me the estimated power for this design. Okay. Uh, how do you get that? Well, you go look at the web page uh, that talks about, um, if you go to the main page there. Yeah. It'd be an interesting data point, too. Yeah, an interesting the, comparison to include in the yeah. final report. Yeah. So, uh, which menu? Web page. Could you guys also, because you built your own I2C interface in Verilog here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can you yeah, briefly yeah. describe the the development process for that and uh, so how you debugged it? So how uh, what we do is like uh, before we uh, do before we doing that, we kind of we first build our I2C master and uh, we build our own test bench according to this uh, mm -hmm. uh, this protocol, and uh, we built a. Uh, state machine, to, uh, state machine like that to to like, uh, so for this uh, protocol, you will have to uh, set the set the slave and master into a specific start uh, condition, and after that, we you will send the send some specific data into the uh, into the master, and then you will wait for master to uh, mm. acknowledge that. After uh, uh, after that, the slave will send the. Uh, send the data uh, in 16 bits, like divided divided into the upper bit bytes, which contains uh, eight bits, and lower uh, uh, data bytes, which contains also eight bits. And then once you're done with that, we all, you will also have to wait wait for this uh, master to give a uh, acknowledgement. Sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, and then we kind of according to to that protocol, we build the uh, FSM like that, and then. Uh, and then using the test bench when we uh, get what we uh, what we expected and then we kind of use uh, to use that current source to verify sure. our design so this sure. is a basic design flow yeah. very cool it's a really neat piece of infrastructure that um, I can imagine a lot of future students sort of benefiting from it could even be a lab. It could be a lab. Yeah. 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 I think it may be a good choice for, for lab one because it's not a, a, a heavy loaded uh, design, but uh, I mean, yeah. you will have to design FSM. But yeah, you will, yeah, you will it's really interesting. Cool. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you both.